Hi, I'm Kinkas. Welcome to Synth DIY Guy, your channel for modular synthesizers, synth DIY, new technologies for sound design and music composition. So hit like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. Today's video is about the Piston Honda by Industrial Music Electronics, formerly known as the Harvest Man. Piston Honda is basically a dual wavetable oscillator and it has something very special and very unique to it, which is three axis morphing with nonlinear wave shapes. I'm not very good at describing what that actually means, but we'll hear it in action as we go along. Now, one thing that I immediately noticed when I got this module was that it's very ergonomic. The controls are pleasantly arranged in a way that invites tweaking, invites playing with it. It has control inputs for everything and there's a lot that you can do by patching it with other things and routing it through other things etc. But it's also a really really good standalone instrument that you can just play with your hands as it is without having to use anything else. So that's going to be my focus for the demo portion of this video. I'm going to do a one take drone performance using the Piston Honda as a standalone instrument. But before I do that, I'd like to show you a little bit of the different features and things that this module can do because it's really amazing. It's not quite as deep as the Kermit, which is actually, in this case, an advantage because there's not so much to think about. You can be more immediate about performing with it, about playing with it. I did make a cheat sheet for this as well which will be linked to in the description below, in case you want it. It'll help guide me through demonstrating the functions of the module. So the Piston Honda has two identical oscillators, and these are the control sections for each oscillator. Up here, number one, here number two. Actually, <coughs> Industrial Music Electronics uses A and B for channels rather than numbering them. And the waveform selection axes are as expected X, Y, and Z. I have some control voltages plugged in here for us to check out later, but the attenuverters are all in the middle. So right now we're not hearing anything. So let's just hear the module. Let's turn up the volume here. Here you have the two pitch controls. One thing that's interesting right off the bat with these pitch controls is that they conform to the chromatic scale, but it doesn't feel that way because when you turn them, they're not stepped. So there's some kind of slew programmed in there so that it does feel fluid and continuous and glidey, but when it stops, when you stop it, it settles in one of the 12 chromatic notes of the octave and that can be really handy for performance because you can very easily find intervals that are actually in tune based on the western system right of course you do need to make sure that they're in tune with the fine tune here which i did already so here's the first thing that you can do with this let's turn off the delay here and a little bit less reverb and just playing with the two oscillators is fun enough on its own. Now, as I start to modulate some of these sliders over here, these are the waveform select controls. You start finding different timbres. And you may notice that there's a little button lit up over here. That's the select button. When you click on this, it means that the corresponding oscillator is responding to these waveform select controls, right? So right now it's both of them. But I could turn off this one, for example, and now that one stays static. And now I'm only changing the waveform of the top oscillator, right? I can leave that one steady and start changing waveforms of the other one, right? So that's a way to get a separate timbre from each of the oscillators, right? Now back to both of them. And these waveforms morph into each other. It's not a discrete step.
Now if I press and hold the encoder and press the mode button here on one oscillator, that opens up the menu for that particular oscillator where I have some controls like the unison mode for example, which is really cool. Unison mode gives you like a second oscillator in the same pitch but slightly off. And you have different unison modes with different effects. So yeah, you have off, mode 1, unison 2, unison 3, unison 4, octave below, fifth above, fourth below, and off again. And it cycles. You can also press the button again to get out of selection, turn it down, change the octave. Right? So you can go from minus two octaves all the way up to two octaves, which is nice too. Now here is the morph enable. So right now X, Y are morphing, but Z is discrete. So as I turn Z, it just jumps to different waveforms. So this enables which of the axes are morphable and which ones are discrete. And it gives you all combinations. So now I have YZ, I can have XZ, I can have just X. I can have just Y. I can have just Z. And I can have none. So now Morph is disabled. So these controls are all discrete now. But only for this oscillator, remember. This is the menu for oscillator A. There's an identical menu for oscillator B. So there's a, a quite a bit of control that you can get individually per oscillator. The next parameter is waveform CV. So right now I'm sending some LFOs and things and envelopes to the waveform inputs, right? And as I turn the attenuverters, you start to hear the effect of those. Make it a little slower here. There you go. Now if I turn waveform CV control off. As you can hear, our right side, which is oscillator A, is static now while our left side, oscillator B, is responding to the morphing, to the incoming CV of the wave shapes. Okay, now tone determines some of the tonal characteristics of each oscillator, right? You have orthodox, degenerate, problematic, and pathological. Sounds like a rating system for ex-girlfriends. The CV mode, now, you have a CV input here, a frequency CV with its uh, associated attenuverter and that's normally applied as a direct frequency control an additional one because you do have the one volt per octave input right here as well however you can change that so that it's now modulating the FM amount and you do have an external FM input over here which is normal to the other oscillator so if I turn the attenuator up here start hearing oscillator B frequency modulating oscillator A, right? And if I have the CV input in that mode, I can control. It's easier to hear with a more sinusoid kind of a wave. So if I turn my LFO faster here, that's a cool sound right there. And you still have the manual control over here. There you go. Now I put the attenuator in the middle, attenuverter in the middle. I can do it manually now. Oscillator B also has an attenuator over here. It's just not as nice a orange knob but it's right here it's a tall trimmer it does the same thing it's normaled to oscillator a so i can actually cross modulate them right 
since they're both normal to each other. Some pretty gnarly sounds there. Now let's say you're performing and you don't want to get into the menu to do things, right? So you want to change the octave, for example. There are some button combinations, shortcuts that you can use, just like old school video games. And that's what I have the cheat sheet for. And one of them is to change the octave, which is very important when you are when you're playing it standalone like I am here. Right? Because you're not using a keyboard or any other kind of controller to change the pitch. And you're limited to that frequency when you're on that particular octave. Holding the select button and turning the encoder changes the octave. That's the top frequency that you can achieve manually, which is pretty high. And that's the lowest. We can get down to pretty much LFO here. See, I'm FMing oscillator B with oscillator A, so we can hear that frequency, and it's at that point a fast LFO. The other useful shortcut here is when you press down the encoder and then press the select. That changes your unison modes, which can be super cool in a performance situation. And it's certainly nice and appreciated that you don't have to get into a menu to cycle through the unison modes. Now, doesn't that sound nice? Let's turn off the FM there. So as you can see, there's a lot that you can do directly on the panel with the controls. It's not a crammed panel, so you can actually get your fingers in there. Sliders are a little close to each other, but if you use your fingers like this, instead of trying to grab them, then it's not so bad. And now, this is the stock wavetable. I should mention that there's a micro SD slot here where you can load your own waves. You can use free software by Paul Schreiber to create your own waveforms, generate your own wavetables that you can load in here and customize the module to sound how you want it to sound. I personally really love the stock waves. I find that they do what I what I like. So I'm not I'm not going there just yet. Now here's another interesting feature of the module. There's a mode button over here. And there are basically just two modes, right? The one we're using right now, which uses the internal oscillator, and then there's an external oscillator mode. So I can plug in a sine wave, for example, into my FM external in, right? That's why it says external in. And if I press the button, now I'm processing my external oscillator through the piston Honda's wave shaper. Just kind of like a wave table folder. I'm going to leave oscillator B as a very low sine wave so that we can focus our hearing on the top one here. So that's that sine wave from my analog 3340 here. And now the frequency here becomes the amplitude of the folding. This is no longer affecting frequency. And the shapes... The shapes determine the shape of the folding. You can get even noisy like that. Let's turn on some of those modulation sources. So 
so it's a way to mangle external incoming signals as well. Which also yields very nice results. Let's go back to the internal oscillator. You can hear the difference. It's definitely not the same. Let's hear that with a triangle wave. Super nice, right? Let's hear that with a saw. Very cool. Let's go back to internal oscillator. Now, there's a mix output over here, so you can just, uh, for example, have them both in mono like that. Both oscillators mixed into a single input here of my monsoon. But I like, I like stereo. I'm a stereo kind of a guy. Let's turn select on again here. Now bottom one is again responding to wave shaping here. And uh, let's turn up the octave. So again, press select, turn encoder, gone up the octave. There's a link button. Link button links both oscillators together. So you can use one single CV control both volt per octave input here or the knob to move both oscillators simultaneously and by using the octave in the unison modes you can achieve different pitches for each oscillator so you can create a sort of a complex single oscillator stereo in this case and you can FM each other again which can be super cool. This knob right here is disabled now because this is the one controlling both oscillators. Let's cross-modulate them. Yeah, have them FM each other. Cool. This module really lets you go from really mellow, beautiful harmonic sounds to some crazy noisy stuff very easily you have a whole range and it's really a joy to play by itself i mean i love sending it modulation processing it and everything but honestly i could do a whole show with just the piston through a reverb like we have it right here a guided meditation or a soundtrack for a silent film if you really learn it like you would learn any instrument, you know, practice it, get used to its functions, you know, develop muscle memory and, uh, and a clear understanding of the concepts involved, you can really play it like an instrument. This thing actually has presets just like every other Mark III module from Industrial Music Electronics and it has a preset manager. You just need to press this little button right here. And you can just turn the encoder and choose from the different presets. It's up to eight presets. So that can be super cool as well, just because you can have different presets for different performances, different songs in your set or whatnot. Now, what it does that's super cool, and again, just like any other Mark III module, is morph between presets, which more than crossfading, it's actually changing the parameters so that they go from one preset to the other smoothly. Let's take a look at some of that. Okay, I'll turn up the volume here. Here's preset one, preset two, preset three, preset four, preset five. I'm pretty sure I have them how they were. They came from factory. I don't think I actually changed any of these presets myself but you can randomize them. Now if I hold the encoder and press the preset button here, you get to the preset menu. And I can hit randomize current. And that's pretty cool, actually. That's a way to, maybe if you're an uninspired 
I don't know what to do. You can just randomize it until you find the sound you'll really like and then move on from there. Lo and behold, the random presets are awesome. Every single one sounds really cool. In fact, that can be part of the performance. You can just press the randomize button for a while for the section of your performance that you want it to be extra chaotic. And turn the turn the frequency controls while you're at it. Alright, let's go back to the menu, randomize. Cool. And then you can you can choose to save that randomized preset. Right? Save to preset. You can choose choose which one. Right? Or you can edit all of your presets and then just click save presets. And it'll save all of them. If I press the button again, then that lets me edit the current preset. I press the button again and it gets into Morph. So I press it once, I have Preset Selector. I press it again, and then it's morphing. And then here's what's cool. I can send the CV here, or even manually just turn this tall trimmer here and smoothly morph between the presets. Check that out. Ain't that just so cool? You can start from a different one too. Start from one. And then slowly morph between all of them. Now I can change the behavior of the snob right here and the input. Okay, let's get off the presets. And if I press the encoder again, hold it, press link, that opens the global options menu. Here you can determine the preset scope, for example. So it can be right like it is right now for all parameters. We can change it so it's just the waves, just the waveform, so everything else is not recorded with the preset. You can set it manually. You can choose CV plus offset which means that this knob will be an offset to the incoming CV, which also means that you can use it by itself, right? CV plus attenuator means that this now becomes an attenuator for the incoming CV for the preset morphing. So that means you can use this to fine tune your incoming CV so that you're morphing between just two presets or even within a small section of the morph itself, which can be very cool. There's trigger plus offset. So that means that it changes the behavior of this input so that it waits for a trigger and then advances one preset at each trigger and the knob then becomes a stepped control where you can, instead of morphing, you're just uh, discreetly scrolling similarly to just turning the encoder. And then there's trigger random. This one is like pressing the randomized pattern. You send the trigger and it randomizes the preset for you. So you don't have to actually be doing that manually. So that can be super cool to play with as well. And that's the last control there. I like to leave it in CV offset default unless I have something specific in mind performance wise. Now you can set one of the presets to be the startup preset, which can be extra handy if you have a bunch of Mark three modules, and uh, you want to turn on the system and have all of them load up to the preset that works well for your performance. Right now I have this function you know, off. Now the frequency knobs, you can have them normal or you can have them reversed so that the big knobs become fine tuned, see? And the little knobs become the coarse. Some people prefer it this way because they like to have the big chunky knobs for fine tuning. I actually find these tall trimmers work really well for fine tuning. I like having large coarse control, so I leave it normal myself. Now, load waves from SD, it's self-explanatory. It'll load the waves that you have in your SD card that goes right here. And then there's a reboot. It's a soft reboot for the whole module, which can be also very handy.
So I think I've covered most of the functions that are offered in this amazing module, Piston Honda Mark III. But what I really want to do is just perform using the Piston Honda as a standalone instrument. So I'll actually remove all of the patch cables that affect anything because I'm just going to play the piston like an instrument, like the instrument that it is. For a little while, I hope you enjoy my performance and that it's inspiring to you. And uh, yeah, let's go.
Okay, okay, I think that's it for now. I hope you like the video. Hope you like the jam. Hope you like the module. If you do, hit like, subscribe, join my Patreon, comment below, hit the notification bell, blah blah blah. See you soon. Stay noisy.